WikiLeaks is claiming that the CIA has created a computer program that impersonates the software of the Russian antivirus company Kaspersky Lab. Let's get more details on this story. Our correspondent Caleb Morpin. Caleb, good to see you. What else then is in these revelations? Well, we've got a new batch of documents from the Vault 8 of WikiLeaks. Uh, this new batch of documents that's been released uh, showing some of the internal workings of the CIA, particularly in relation to software. Um, now, what was released is a program called Hive. Um, and essentially, this is a major component of CIA infrastructure um, and malware. Um, and it provides uh, covert communications uh, about how the CIA operates and what kind of software and malware that they're using. Now, one thing that was revealed uh, in, these, in these documents is that essentially the CIA had a program uh, to imitate Kaspersky Laboratory. Now, this is a huge popular Russian software company. Um, and it's recently been subject to scandal. U.S. authorities have actually banned uh, uh, any government agencies from using Kaspersky Laboratories, citing concerns about national security. This happened back in September. Um, and it was recently reported by the Wall Street Journal that Russian hackers had stolen U.S. cyber secrets uh, from the National Security Agency by using software that was developed by Kaspersky Laboratory. Um, this is actually what was said by Elaine Duke of the Homeland Security Department of the United States. The risk that the Russian government, whether acting on its own or in collaboration with Kaspersky, could capitalize on access provided by Kaspersky products to compromise federal information and information systems directly implicates U.S. national security. Now. There has been a response to these allegations from Kaspersky Laboratory. They said, quote, the company has never helped nor will help any government in the world with its cyber espionage or offensive efforts. Uh, they made clear they had nothing to do with any hacking or, or stealing of information to that effect. And now we see revealed in this back, batch of WikiLeaks documents that the CIA specifically has a program developed for the purpose of imitating this popular Russian software software company, essentially making activities look like they're being done by Kaspersky Laboratory. In fact, there are three examples of source code uh, that's used to build a, a fake certificate for antivirus software uh, to make it look like it originated with Kaspersky Laboratory. Uh, so quite an interesting development. All these allegations have been leveled against Kaspersky Laboratory, this very popular and very large Russian software company. And we now see that the CIA had a specific program program designed to make it look like activities were being done by Kaspersky, to imitate and, and leave essentially uh, false digital fingerprints for Kaspersky Laboratory. A very interesting development. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll, uh, we'll stick with this story a little bit more. Many thanks for now. Caleb Morpin there in New York. Now, Vault 8 is a new series of WikiLeaks publications on a huge tranche of leaked CIA files. It details the revelations in the previous batch called Vault 7, which revealed the agency had its own malware, exploited vulnerabilities in phones and TVs, and had the ability to bypass encryption on messaging apps. Let's bring in former British intelligence officer Annie Mash on. Hmm. I think it's safe to say most people won't be trusting the CIA anytime soon, but we shouldn't be surprised, should we? This is kind of what they do. They're a spy agency. Are you surprised by any of this or the scope of, of their uh, operations? Not at all, no. I mean, uh, in, intelligence agencies have had this level of capability, even in the analogue era. It was just much more targeted, uh, much more resource intensive. Of course, with the internet, it's opened up huge new opportunities for them to master the internet, which is one of the phrases that came out of the Snowden leaks a few years ago. But in this case, of course, the WikiLeaks uh, CIA, Vault 7 and Vault 8, revelations are fascinating because the Vault 7 revelations um, last year revealed that, for example, the CIA could actually uh, make a hack look at, like it had come from Russia under the codename Umbridge, from China under Marble, and under many, many other countries. So it's actually really mucked up the whole concept of forensicating any hack attacks that go on around the world. So I suppose it was inevitable it would move on to looking at corporations that were had a, a gold standard 
standard of providing protection around the world for companies and also the American government, by the way. Kaspersky is highly reputable. Um, it's been operating for a couple of decades. It has about 400 million users around the world, including until very recently the American government. So you know, if they're going to do that to, to whole countries, of course they're going to do it to competitive and competitor corporations around the world too. OK, the thing I will glean from all of that is if anybody accuses anyone else of having carried out a hack, I won't believe it because you just never know how much smoke is involved in a smoke screen. Why would the CIA choose Kaspersky Lab? And it's been a fascinating few months with Kaspersky in the doghouse, big scandal over them, and now we've got the CIA revealed as being able to impersonate Kaspersky. But, but why then? <laughs> There seems to be quite a lot of history. I mean, obviously, the CIA will be interested in a, a very successful Russian-based company that offers protection on the Internet. But it goes back a bit further, because I think it was 2010, uh, the very first proven cyber warfare weapon was deployed. And this was against the Iranian domestic uh, civilian uh, nuclear development capability. And this was at the time when the Americans were drumming, uh, war, uh, drumming uh, up against a war uh, against Iran. And there was an attack made against their, their civilian nuclear capability. And in this case, this virus, which was called Stuxnet, Stuxnet was deployed against the centrifuges that, that uh, enriched the uranium. And nobody knew where it came from. It seemed to be very weaponized, uh, state level. And it was actually Kaspersky that unveiled who had developed it. And it was the Americans and the Israeli intelligence agencies. So ever since then, there's been sort of daggers drawn between uh, these two competing sides. And Kaspersky has been very much in the crosshairs of both the American and the Israeli intelligence agencies. And so it has evolved since then, where we have Kaspersky saying, you know, we, we can do this. Uh, we can prove that uh, some of these hacks are not um, Russian. They're American when it comes to Rushgate in America and the presidential elections. Um, so they needed to discredit them. And I think that this new application of a virus, a state level, a uh, very aggressive virus that will discredit a very proven brand around the world is exactly what the Americans would want and the Israelis also would want. Some fascinating insights there, I think. Much appreciated your time there. Former British intelligence officer Annie Mashon is my guest. Thank you, Annie.